Are solo cleaners safe when cleaning strangers' homes? That's a great question, and we're going to talk about it today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by Savvy Cleaner Training, which is an online learning hub that's a go at your own pace. There's a section for your employees. There's a section for you, and it covers everything from employees and how to motivate them and how to grow and how to scale your business, how to train, how to clean. It's got cleaning chemical safety. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in there that you need to grow your cleaning business. So check it out at SavvyCleaner.com. All right, on to today's show, we have a new house cleaner. She called into the show and she asks this question. Hello, Angela. My name is Josephine. I'm looking to start my own cleaning business and I've done a lot of research. I've gone on YouTube, but my husband has um, concerns about me doing this as a lone female entering people's homes. And I just wondered whether you have had this issue, you know, going into people's homes and whether people have actually voiced this concern to you. Thank you. All right. This is a question that comes up again and again and again, and it's all about safety. Were people safe way back when, or are they safer today? I have no idea because who knows the reporting and who did they report it to? So all I can do is take you from today, moving forward and help keep you safe as you go to a job. So the very first thing that I want you to do is I want you to look at the ads that you're writing. When you write ads for house cleaning, what does it say? What kind of images are you using in the ads? The reason I bring this up first and foremost, because before you even get to a customer's house, you're sending a message with everything that comes before. So if you make an ad and it's got a maid wearing a little tiny skimpy outfit and high heels and she's in some kind of little sexy pose and she's like dusting something, the message that you're sending is, hey, it's flirty, it's fun, it's sexy, it's youthful, all these things. The kind of person you're going to attract is not the kind of person that necessarily is going to hire you for a deep clean for house cleaning because house cleaning is dirty, gritty, grimy work. And I'm not suggesting that you have dirty, gritty, grimy pictures but make sure that the pictures you use in your ads are cohesive with the message that you're trying to send. We have lots of house cleaners that find these cute little clip art and funzy pictures. Then when they get to the customer's house, they find a dirty old man that's wanting, you know, something else other than house cleaning. And then they're like, well, 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 well why would he think that? He thought that because of the message you sent. All right, the next message you're going to send is on the telephone. If a customer texts you, I recommend getting on the telephone with them. I don't know why. But there's something that is really alarming these days about being on a telephone with a customer because here's what happens. You weed out the people that are just fooling around or the scam artists. So if you get on the telephone with a customer, you can actually ask real questions and you can get real answers. So the good news is this. You get on the telephone with a customer and you ask a series of questions based on what you say will determine how you come across to the customer. Do you come across as a no-nonsense kind of person that is going to go to their house and you're actually there to clean? Or are you like, hi, I'm Angela and I would like to clean your house. Like, how many rooms do you have, right? Based on what you say, even if they're just house cleaning questions, the tone of your voice, the way you ask the question will set a tone that says, hmm, wait a second, maybe she is fooling around. Or I might say, whoa, she's no-nonsense and she's here actually just to clean, okay? So the words that you use, the choices of words that you use. Now, the next thing is you're going to go do a walkthrough. So on the telephone with the customer, you're going to ask for the next, the next sale, which is the walkthrough. I want to come to your house. I want to take a walkthrough with you. Now, when you go to the customer's house, before you go, I want you to leave notes of where you are, send someone a text, give them the phone number, give them the address of where you're going. This will help keep you safe if you are solo and you're going out to bid a job. Say, hey, listen, I'm going to Mrs. Peterson's house. She lives on 312 lilac lane or whatever, that I'll be there from one until maybe 115 or 120. So let somebody know where you're going to be. If for any reason there's a problem, they can text you at 120 and say, hey, is everything okay? That's your out if something goes wrong. If you don't respond to that text, then they call the police. Okay. So you have a backup so that you are safe. Now, if you live in a dangerous neighborhood or you're working in a dangerous neighborhood, another thing I might recommend is having someone go with you sit outside in a car so that there's this backup. Oh, hey, listen, my husband is out in the car waiting. It, it kind of gives an extra layer of protection of just somebody else being nearby. All right, having said that, you're going to get to the customer's house. What are you wearing? I want to make sure that whatever you're wearing when you arrive sends the message that says, I'm actually here just to clean. And so you want to show up not in Sunday clothes. 
And I say Sunday clothes because there are lots of people that are like, oh, it's a sales call and I want to look my best. And so they dress up and they wear a little dress, you know, that shows half your legs. And then they're wearing like the pantyhose or the heels or whatever. And the hair is down and they've got the makeup on and the big earrings and they look super cute and they're fun and all these things, which looks like you're headed out with your friends for drinks. It doesn't look like you're there to clean the house. And so again, it sends the wrong message. And so are you safe? I don't know. Are you sending messages that you're safe? And I'm not trying to, you know, rap on you about this, but I want you to be very clear that every single step that you make along the way sends a very clear message. Either you're about business or you're not. And so if you're going to clean houses, show up looking like you're going to clean houses, show up in your uniform, be professional, have your clipboard with you. That's why you're there. And then you want to ask questions of the customer. And if for any reason there's any hint of anything else going on or any other expectations, make a note of it on your clipboard. And you want to ask the customer right now, right up front. Lots of house cleaners don't do this, but I need you to ask right up front. I'm sorry. I was confused by what you just said. Did you have different intentions or are we actually here to clean and ask the customer? There are lots of situations that I hear of on a daily basis where there will be a homeowner and they might smack the house cleaner on the bum on the way out the door or something like that. If that happens, you turn around immediately and say, oh my gosh, I'm in your way. I just got smacked on the bum. How weird is that? Was that an accident or was that intentional? And when you bring it up immediately, you send a very clear signal that says, oh, I'm not here for any other reason except to clean your house. Now, where are you running ads? And I'm going to back up way back to the ad part for just a second. Where are you running ads? And lots of people will run ads on Craigslist because they are inexpensive or free. Craigslist is known for having all kinds of ulterior cleaning people that come and they may be topless or what have you while they're cleaning. And it's not all about cleaning. There are other things going on. All right. So if you're going to run an ad on, on Craigslist, specify in the ad, no sexual favors, specify that so that it's very clear right up front. It's just about the house cleaning. And then make sure that all of your marketing materials are all about just the cleaning. Make sure when you show up, you are all about the cleaning. And then every single time you do the job, I'm, I'm supposing that you get hired, but every single time you do the job, make sure that you show up and you're dressed appropriately, that your behavior is not flirty and um, inappropriate, that you're not making comments that are flirty or inappropriate, that you're not acting in any way that would be unprofessional or send the wrong message. And I have to bring this up because I know that, especially in some of the hot areas like Florida, in the summertime, there are house cleaners that are so hot, they'll wear a tankini or, or something small and little butt shorts, and then they're in there cleaning because they're so hot. And then they bend over and you can see all the cleavage and whatever. And it sends completely the wrong message. It does not say we're professional. It says, oh, hey, I'm here cleaning and it's hot outside. And the customer comes in and says, hey, would you like a nice cool glass of iced tea? Why don't you sit down and relax for a minute? And the next thing you know, one thing leads to another. It has happened. It happens on a regular basis unless you yourself stop it. Now, protection inside the home. I'll go quickly with this, but protection inside the home. Carry mace with you on your apron or in your cargo pants. That way you have something to protect you in the event that you need it. Unlikely you'll need it, but you'll have it if you need it. Also keep your cell phone on you. I carry my cell phone with me at all times under all places and most people do. Inside your apron or in your cargo pants. That way in the event that you have to run out of the house and you have to call someone to come pick you up or an Uber or a policeman or something, you have your cell phone with you. Don't get in this situation where your keys and your phone are somewhere else in the house. Keep them on your person. You don't need your whole car keys, but a car key. I keep the car key also in my apron pocket or in my cargo pants. And for that reason, if I have to bolt in the event of some emergency, I have my car key with me and I can, I can go to safety. These things will keep you protected. Now it is all about you take responsibility. You, you take responsibility for your own personal safety while you're on the job. Do not leave this to chance. Do not leave this to, am I just going to find some nice customers? The truth is most customers that hire you for house cleaning, most of them are really just about the house cleaning. And if anything goes awry, I usually look at the house cleaner first. What was said? What were you wearing? What message did you send? What did your ads say? What did your marketing material say? What was it that triggered this? Because something triggered it or the customer wouldn't have thought it was possible. There are lots of home service people that come to people's homes and they're actually just there to do business. It happens all the time in every industry. No, no, no harm, no foul, right? It's just business. 
So make sure that if you are going to start a house cleaning business and safety is a, a primary issue for you, that you only promote safety in every move that you make and you should have no problems. Alrighty, I hope that helps you a little bit. I know that's kind of a, uh, but um, who knows? Maybe it will save a life. You never know. All right, if this helps, please pass it on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, you got it. Leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.